Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we worship you. We thank you for this moment you gave to us to come together this morning to glorify your holy name. Mighty God, we ask your presence and we ask you, Lord God, to move in us and through us so we can be able, Lord God, to strengthen each other and share our joy that we have in you and be able to, to be prepared in this moment and be able to also to share to others. So mighty God, thank you for this moment and we ask you to bless us and to bless this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. All the time. I always look at Sunday as a special moment for believers to come together and want to call to exalt and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I'm so glad that you tune in. I'm so glad that you are here. We all going to worship the Lord together right now. So as we are preparing to, for me to share the word of God. So Heavenly Father, we thank you, we worship you, and we praise you. God, I just pray that you walk through me to deliver exactly what you want people to know about you. So mighty God, I praise you. Have your way today. In Jesus Christ's name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. For those who don't know me, those who are watching, my name is Christoph Akagla. I'm a pastor here at the Mount of the Lord Church in Milford, Massachusetts. So every Sunday we come together to celebrate our King. Last week was the Resurrection Day Easter. And uh, this is the second week where Jesus appeared to his disciple. I don't know about you if Jesus has appeared to you, but I know you have received him and he become your Lord and Savior. Therefore, hopefully, Jesus has appeared to you. And you know that uh, the resurrection we celebrate is not just uh, an event, but it's a kind of relationship that you have to be continuing with him. So our God is alive. Therefore, we supposed to be alive also. Hallelujah. So today we're going to read from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 9. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure many trials for a little while. This trial will show that your faith is genuine it is being tested as fire. Test and purify gold through your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So, when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. 
You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glory and expect an expressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. This is a Peter who is speaking to people back then. And those people, it's not that things are really working so well for them. We celebrate the joy last week about resurrection. Now is a time to deal with life. Life is difficult sometimes for those who follow Jesus. So this is the followers of Jesus, the, the believers who are going through difficulties at this moment. So if you want to learn a little bit about Peter and Paul, we know that Paul was assigned especially to minister to the Gentile and Peter to the Jew. So the Lord has commanded Peter to strengthen his brethren, the believers, and to tend the flock. And this is what this reading is about today. So who are those people that he's writing to? Those people is the audience. They are being from everywhere in the province of Potius, Galatia, Cappadocia, and Asia. Those people were citizens of heaven, God called them in Philippians 3, and therefore were not permanent resident on earth. This will make you sound like crazy. It's like saying that you as a Christian, you are not really permanent resident on this earth. Well, actually, you have another identity. The reason in which people are persecuting you because you are living a certain kind of life that is so contrary for the way it's supposed to be. So in the Roman Empire, that has been this, the, 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 the problem. So from the year between 2005 to 2015, it was reported that 900,000 people were martyred for their faith. The average since then has been at the rate of 100,000 people by year who have lost their life for the sake of Christ. Uh, what, when we talk about persecution, it's not a new thing. This has happened since the very beginning of the church. Persecution is still is today against those who are called Christian who want, just want to do the right things. In other words, follow what Jesus wants us to do. The importance that you have to know here is that people we call scared or stranger is that they were going through a time of suffering and persecution. Some of these Christians were suffering because they were living a godly life and doing what was good and right. Others were suffering reproach for the name of Christ and being railed at by unsaved people, people who just don't want to do anything about Christ. Peter now is writing to encourage them. We all need those kind of encouragement when things are not working well. God impressed Peter to write this kind of letter to them. That their suffering will be lead to glory. Peter has another purpose in mind. He knew that a fiery trial was about to begin. In other words, when you are serving Jesus, it's always the enemy who's in the corner trying to disturb you, to discourage you because the belief that you have. First Peter once he said that there is wonderful joy ahead even though you must endure any trial for a little while. 
I don't know about you, when those kind of things happen, many times when you hear that somebody is going to try, what do you do? Most of them, you want to be there for that person. You want to be compassionate. You want to be just to be able just to allow him that you are going to be praying for that person. But what Peter is saying, he's saying that you're going to be having a glorious moment. Instead, to be the way we used to do it, Peter is have another way of looking at your suffering. Those suffering that you maybe think that you are suffering, they, like Jesus has suffered and uh, went to the glory, Paul, uh, P, uh, Peter is telling you that your suffering will end up in glory. Why? Because your standard is the standard of Jesus Christ. You know, you can suffer for your own wrongdoing though because you choose that way. But when you suffer by doing the right things according to the will of God, the Bible said that you're going to end up in glory. This is what we are talking about here. We are here today. We all know about what's happening in the workplace. Nobody wants to hear about Jesus Christ. Yes, we don't I don't believe that you have to go to the workplace, start preaching to people about Jesus Christ, but you carry what Jesus is in you to the workplace. You go there with who God makes you to be, to be in that workplace. So when you are in that workplace, God can still use you because you become his ambassador in that place. So when you are in the place like that, you don't have to be afraid. Because God knows how to open the door for you. So whatever you are, whatever God wants to do in that place, he can use you, he can prompt your spirit so you can be able to make a difference. We are called as a people to make a difference in this world. Things might be so hard. Things might look so difficult. But greater is in in you than anything in the world. You're going to be persecuted, but make sure that you are persecuted for doing the right things. Don't persecute it, but doing the wrong things, which the devil likes a lot. But God can use anything to make you grow. God is not the source of persecution, but God can use all these things so that he can grow your faith. We are called to grow. The Bible talk about go through the fire. You know, when you go through the fire and the faith, we call something that you stand firm, even though things look like difficult. Why? Because when you hear the word of God, you listen to the promise of Almighty God, you believe on what God says, and you are walking, the devil says, you don't have to walk this way. You look to the devil, you say, I'm going to walk that way because that's the way I'm supposed to. You're not doing it because you're just so cool. You are doing it because you know who you are in the Lord. You are doing it because you know your father is greater than the problem. You are doing it because I know who's behind me, who's inside of me. And when I look the devil or the spirit or the situation in front of me, we call mountain, you speak to that mountain in the name of Jesus Christ because this is who we are. You're going to be persecuted. We all have to be ready in the season, the Bible said, and out of the season. Those seasons happen all the time. You don't have to look for persecution before you find it. It just follows you up. That's why we always say you have to be ready. Ready is not just to be rude to people. Ready because you know who you are. Ready because you are a child of Almighty God. Ready because you have God bigger inside of you that makes you give you that kind of confidence. They have a valuable lesson we want to, we want to learn this morning. The truth. Peter has said something here so powerful. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. 
Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great expectation. The verse that I want to focus on is, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. We have an ESV who said this, to an inheritance that is unperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. Wow. 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 I pray that God will open your heart to, to grasp what is in store for you, even though you are here and the people are treating you that you are nobody. But the eyes, the eyes of God, you are so much important that God is securing your life. That he is always there. He always there, like Jeremiah said. He's always there. And his plan cannot be taken away by anyone else, any problem. So Paul used three words, each beginning with the same letter and ending with the same syllable. Does that mean that it can never perish? Your soul can never perish. It can never uh, spoil. Your inheritance can never spoil. can never fade. Because that is eternal. This inheritance is indestructible as God's word, where Peter again used those words to confirm to you that you are a special. Our job as believer and a Christian is to get people to understand. They need to know the Lord. They need to know the Lord for themselves. Because if you have God for yourself, then he will open you the eyes to see things that you haven't seen before. God is still working everybody's life. Are you the person who wants God more in your life? Do you want to search? you want God to reveal really who he is to you so you can submit to his guidance and submit to him his authority, so allow him to walk in you and through you? Each Christian inheritings an eternal life and kept in heaven. Guys, like God kept watch over you and me all the time because eternal life. We have an eternal life in God. When things look so dark in your life, when we experience the pressure and the squeezing of this life, sometimes it's easy to just say, uh, I don't know that kind of God that I have. It is easy to forget that we have what we have in Christ. So we have all those inheritance I'm talking about. The temptation is to think that our present situation is all over, bigger than what God already has for us. Good news for you. Those problems, they are temporary. They are not come to stay there. Can I say that again? Those problems you are going through, they are temporary. You have to hold on to know that God is in your side. That's what all your expectation have to be in your creator. You have to have him in your life. Because if you don't have anything else, then you start trusting anything else. Because they have so many things there that are trying to guide you in the wrong way. And you're not going to have the end of those things. You're going to keep going to the wrong place until you destroy yourself. We are talking about kingdom of God. The rule of God. The Almighty God, the one who come to save the world, we are talking about Jesus Christ, the Savior. If you put your hope and your life on him, you will find rest for your soul. It will find rest. It, will, it might take a little bit longer because for anything, it takes time to understand it. And you have to commit it to understand it. You don't just look for, like, we click things in the TV or click things in the computer and we walk away from it. No, that's not the God we serve. When things are so important to you, you seek for it. 
Everything that is important to anybody have to seek forward. You have to work hard so you can get that things for your life. We are talking about eternal life. We are talking about something that will change your life forever. The knowledge of the presence of Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth. The person that has been coming to this earth. The one who has authority over everything on this planet. The name above all names. The Bible says that in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Every situation shall bow down. Every problem must bow down. It will happen if you understand that. Only if you take a step and believe the word that Jesus says and understand and make a part of your life. Because when God says something, it's not just saying. He's saying to guide you. He's saying things that you can listen and you can apply it. He said things so that we can change our perspective of seeing things. He's saying things so that you can be prepared in a season and out of the season. So God's will is intended to change our life. It's more than head knowledge. You get from your head, get to your soul, and you start meditating on it. God's word is intended to transform everybody. Transformation is going to happen. When are you expecting transformation? Even though the problem is there, you know to whom to turn to. God will help you through it. And at the end, you will give him glory because he is the head. Our feeling about our circumstances can sometimes overshadow us, everything else, because of a difficult moment. Peter knew all these things, but he decided to tell the truth. The truth that he's sharing meant to keep everyone grounded, to put their present suffering in perspective. Have you put your present suffering in perspective? I don't know, a couple years ago or a couple of weeks ago, something happened so bad, and you feel like... Um, I'm stuck. But it's a suffering to you, right? But put that in perspective. Talk to God about that. Pray with a brother and sisters. Pray with people about that kind of situation. Because that's the God we serve. When you are going through something, you walk in that things. You help, you, if you can, let people help you through it. One of the things we do first is prayer. But you have to know what kind of problem you are having. Is it a problem that relates to your own behavior? Is it a problem that comes from outside to distract you? Is it a problem that is a, you just don't know how that comes in against you? You have to slow down. First, look at it, the problem with the eyes of God. So when you start speaking to that problem, the Bible says speak to that mountain and it will be, be removed. We don't just pray because we want to pray. We pray because we want to pray according to the will of God. When we pray according to the will of God, is something got to happen. Something got to happen. So what we are doing here, yes, Peter is writing letter to those people who are suffering. They are persecuted. At the same time, what we can learn from it, the truth is we are stronger because God is on our side. We are stronger because the knowledge of the powerful knowledge of the word of God inside us. We are stronger because we together, by the power of God, we can command anything that come against us to be destroyed or to be away from us. Where are you today? Where are you with your problem? Where are you with those uh, uh, persecutions that come against you? Are you getting yourself ready? 
Because it's a fight. Christian life is always a fight. And because a fight, you are not called to be discouraged. You are not called to say that, oh, no, I won't fight anymore. No. If you have Jesus Christ inside you, that's the beginning of your fight. You just have to speak out your word. And you speak out of the confidence, out of faith that is inside you. And you declare those words with so much powerful way that you know that who you know. Because God can use you for any way possible. Yeah, like I said, last week was Easter. It's easy to forget that Easter was just a new beginning, not just a resurrection. A new beginning in your life. Because God is alive, we're supposed to be alive also. He reminds us that we have a new life in Christ, that there is an inheritance for us, that we are shielded by God's power. God's protection is always in us. No matter what happened to us, we have that same new and lasting life in Christ. Take that with you and be strengthened. This Almighty God loves you so much. As Jesus was raised, so were we. No one and nothing can take away what Christ has provided for you and me. I want you to be joyful for being Christian. You know? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Life, life is life. We all understand life life. But you know why? You know why? Just know who you are. Know who you are. That will help you a lot, even though you are going through difficulties. Some difficulty, like I said earlier, is difficult. They try. Undergoing persecution sometimes. If you were writing to a friend who were undergoing persecution and try, what would it be the first thing that you might write? I have I learned that in my uh, chaplain in a hospital. You know, people are highly emotional when you go to hospital. You don't go there to tell your perspective. You go there, you see them, and help them to express their emotion. That's what it is. Help them to express their emotion because they are going through difficulties. Well, what we would say if we want to write a letter, we will offer a word of comfort. We say that we are praying for you. We are so sorry that you are having to go through this trying time. Those are the kind of things we use most of the time, right? But surprisingly, there are not the word Peter chose to open with. That's not what Peter chose. You go to verse 6. He said that be truly glad. Hey, well, the people are going through difficulties. He said, be truly glad. <laughs> there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. This trial will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire, test, and purify gold. I mean, this is the kind of thing sometimes is difficult uh, people to share the gospel. It's difficult because you have to be transformed first before you start sharing certain things. And a certain thing we don't even know how to share it. And we just, you know, we can connect it to people. We are called to connect to people. We are called to help people for eyes to be opened up. We are called to be there for people because they are going through difficulties. But you just don't do it in a fleshly way. Another word, you just don't have head knowledge kind of the way we do things. Because I know all, I know how to repeat it, therefore I just can go and repeat it. No. You have to allow God to work in you. Give you so much compassion. Fill you with a lot of wisdom. Because there are moments to talk, but moments to stop talking. There are moments to embrace a situation and the way that when you start speaking, he just heart going to be opened up to you. 
You don't have to agree with everything. But when God starts walking through you, you will see it in the eyes of the person you are talking to. You will understand that God is working. All this for his glory. You can be the person God wants to use. Are you ready for God to use you? Are you ready? Paul is saying here that suffering is going to happen. It is inavoidable. Those trials are going to happen because you are Christian, because your lifestyle is different. So people are going to come against you anyway. So, but you notice this. If those things happen to you, it's for the glory. So joy, be joyful. Be joyful. That's why he said those things, they refine and purify, purify one faith. Much as gold is refined by fire, when it draws, is removed. Your faith is going to be purified. Try to prove the reality of one faith. Stress deepen and strengthen in the Christian faith and let it really be displayed. Oh, Shanda Masa. I pray that you, God to help you to get it. I pray that God to help you to know who you are. I pray that God help you to understand that you are a warrior, you are, you are a soldier for the kingdom of God. You have something you can do for this community. You can stand against the work of the devil. You can look at the devil in the face and speak the word of God to it. You just can stand strong. You can stand strong because God has something greater for you to do. Even refined gold, though it lasts a long time, right, eventually perish. But faith and a everything that can never perish. Everything can perish, but not faith. Hmm. You know, I want to remind you that God used this trial and the suffering to refine our faith through them. When you are going through something, instead to start to condemn, insult, and blame people, if you are, you are really, really there, you will know that there's opportunity for you. Take that to the hand of God. Pray about it. Because this is the way God, you will be refined. So those things are going to happen, but you're going to be refined. He will be a vehicle. Those who try as a vehicle by which our faith will become pure and mature. Sometimes you want to be mature, right? I just pray to be mature. I'm praying about, I want to do this, I'm going to do that. God wants to do it through you. He used things like that. The trial and the tribulation. Just to build. It's not come from God. The trial and tribulation, it comes from the evil one. But God used it to prepare you. So when you are being prepared, when again those things are showing up, you, you just laugh at it. Because you know that this has come from the evil one. So God used all these things to prepare you. Our faith will be shown to have far more value than the purest gold. No amount of money can purchase a life transformed by Christ. At the end of suffering, we are found to be more and more like Christ. We have more in common with our Savior who also suffer on our behalf. Our faith come out of this stronger and more assured. Have you ever found yourself persecuted? Think about it. Have you lost friends or family due to your faith? Are you keeping quiet, hoping to avoid the suffering sometime? Oh, I don't want to have problems, so I don't want to say anything. Their suffering is always, try is always around you. I pray that uh, you will be released by the power of God. I pray that uh, the, the, the power that come, uh, the Holy Spirit just come through you. 
When the time to speak, you just say the word in a kind way, because the word already carry power. You don't have to scream before the word work. You just speak out the word, and things are gonna take place. Things are gonna take place. That's why God called us here to be his ambassador. Triumph. You love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, a, with a glorious and expressive joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. Hallelujah. Trust the Lord is something we all have to be constantly doing every single day. Peter walked closely with Jesus for three years. As one of his closest disciples, he has seen Christ's transfiguration. He has seen Jesus crucified and has been restored by Jesus. He has encountered Jesus and spoken with him on at least a few occasions after his resurrection. So Peter, when he's writing this, he knows exactly what he's talking about. Somebody who has to stay alongside, who has to break the law sometimes, they have to rebuke him, restore him back. He knows well what he's talking about. And he's trying to let us know how life sometimes looks like. But God is so great. He's so wonderful. But let's let, let notice this, that uh, even though things seem difficult, God doesn't say you stick there. God does never say that that is going to be your last destination. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that you can overcome that. You're not going to overcome because of your own strength. You're going to overcome because uh, the person that lives inside you because when you are overcome, that brings glory to the Lord. So we are called to overcome those troubles we are going through. Those persecutions that come against us. Those things that people are doing against you. God calls you to overcome that things. Because he wants to receive all the glory. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. God, life is going to be harder. But you are more than a conqueror, the Bible says. For those who love and believe in Jesus Christ, salvation is there for you. Those who have not received yet, opportunity is here to give your life. Because we are calling everyone. God said, preach the word so everyone will receive you, will receive Jesus. Everyone will give their life to you. So, is the time for you if you have not yet have Jesus in your life. I know we have prayed so much in a couple of weeks about uh, the, 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 the resurrection, the Easter service, but we continue to pray that the people to continue to seize their own life. Where are you? Do you know Jesus in your life? Do you truly know that after here you're going to go to heaven? Can you say that confidentially in your heart that you, are you going to go to heaven? God wants everyone to come, but are you ready to go? Are you prepared to go there? Peter is telling the persecuted believers that their salvation was evidenced by their joy. You know, if you, if you have really that salvation in you, and all those things, you can go through it, but it won't push you down. It won't discourage you because you know your road. You know your road and you are confident that I'm going to go through it, but I cannot be destroyed. Rejoice in the midst of trial. It's a powerful witness of our faith and our hope. Who is watching you in your trial? Because many times before you know someone is really Christian, is when they go through the trial. Because the reaction is just the real person just come out of you. So who's watching? Who is waiting to see a faith 
that has been refined like pure gold. We, what we are talking about here is really serious. We are talking about transformation and people life. God is always working. As you ready to stand in and step in and say, God, here I am, change me. Help me. Refine me. And make me whole. Brother and sister, let us start by keeping our mind and heart grounded with the truth. Let us do our best every single week to follow the call of Jesus Christ in our life. He's always there. He always wishes everybody to come to him. But sometimes we make our own choice. And when we make our own choice, we put ourselves away from the Lord. And we say that uh, I have enough. But God so loved the world that he gave his son. And he's still waiting for you. So whosoever come to him and believe in him shall be saved. Are you want to believe in God today? Are you want to give your life completely to him? It's not about who you are. It's not about what you have done. It's about someone who's greater than your problem. Someone who loves you so much who can help you through your problem. Someone who just wants you to come to him. Because when you come, you can deal with your problem easily than to try to deal with a problem, your own strength, when you, can, you know that you can make it happen. Otherwise, you'll be doing that a long time ago. So I'm giving you an invitation for all of you who are here and those who are watching that God's love is greater than anything else. People have told you that it's impossible. This is where I used to be. This is where my parents are. This is where I grew up. This, 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 not, this, this is just a bunch of uh, things that we learn in this culture or maybe in your family members. There are nothing like that that God expects you to be saying. He said, I know the plan I have for you. That's it. His prophecy said, I know the plan I have for you. Why you are saying that this is where I used to be, this is where I, I, I am now. God has a new plan for you. He has a new way for you. He has a new wonderful, wonderful way. When you start find out, you're just going to be like, whoa. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Can you give your life to Jesus today? Can you commit your life to him today? Can you embrace his loving kindness, the way he loved the world, the way he did it by sending his son? Can you just embrace that sacrificial love he gave to you today? Receive it. Receive it because it will change your life. It will change, that has changed my life, changed my wife, my family, member life, my brothers here. It will change you. This is all we are talking about. So I'm going to lead you in the prayer right now. And I'm going to ask you from your heart to start searching for God. After this prayer, you don't have a place to go for service. If you are in this area, come to visit us in the month of the Lord Church, 23 Pound Street. So let's pray for you. I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. This morning, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I ask you to heal me and to forgive me for all my sin and make me the person you want me to be. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everyone who are watching, everyone who are here who have prayed this prayer. You said to lead those people to you. Now is you now to work in their heart. Because the way you do things is all start with the heart of a human being. The heart is the source of the place things start happening. Holy Father, I pray that you start working in the heart for everyone who are praying this prayer today. And we give all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen.
God bless you, and I thank you so much for hearing me. Uh, we are here for you. Anytime you need any help, give us a call. We are able to help you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi there. My name is Christopher Kagla, and I am the pastor at the Mount of the Lord Church in Murphy, Massachusetts. Our mission is to help people for the meeting their need spiritually and physically, and to find their purpose in life, and to experience total transformation from the inside out through God's word and prayer. I have a passion for connecting with God and with people, and also connecting people to each other and to God. We believe in showing our faith through our action by serving families, friends, community, our nation, and those far away. And the scripture, Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said, For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. Then this righteous one will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. So that's why we are here. Our first activity that our church is doing it to help our community. Through our Empath Food Pantry program, we are feeding families in great need every week. About 300 people in the area of Milford and our surrounding towns. We are so thankful for our faithful volunteers who are helping to pick up food from local grocery stores and to deliver it to people. If you know of someone in need, our contact information is available in our website. This is why we do the second things. Second activity is that we have a heart for mission. We have been planting churches in Togo, West Africa since 2018. It is a blessing to see what God is doing through our church. I encourage you to join our ministry right here at the Mount of the Lord by bringing your ability, your experience, and support for growing the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 said this, For first, we are more seek the kingdom of God. This is what God recommend. And all these things we are worried about will be given up to, to us back. So please consider, help us meet the need of so many people that do not have other option for help. I want to let you know, we have a 501c3 organization. Let me pray a blessing now over you. Father, I thank you for the one who are watching, and I thank you for the one who have a heart to serve in this time like this. So, Mariga, give us opportunity for all of us to always in your field and do the best that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you, and I thank you so much for listening to me. I will see you soon then. Bye.